Sneako B here with a let's play of Steins Gate. Game created by Nitro Plus. Yes, this is it. This is the game that has been highly requested this very long and a type of game that I have never done before. Uh, many of you thought <laughs> it was really funny. Only about like two or three of you actually guessed this game, which I was shocked because you guys the other day were just requesting this game nonstop. This is, uh, like I said, been highly requested. Uh, it's a game I've always considered doing. If I ever stepped into the full-on visual novel genre, I think I always thought I, I would start with this game because I heard this game is really good. So I've never done a full-on visual novel before. I'd say probably the closest thing I've I've gotten to doing that is probably Course Party Book of Shadows because that had like hardly any gameplay. However, unlike Carp Smart Book of Shadows, I heard this one is actually has a really great story. For that reason, it spawned like a whole bunch of, you know, it's, on its, own, it's got its own anime, maybe it's own manga, it's, I think, even sequels and other spin offs. I mean, it's really quite popular. I've always been sort of hesitant to do these kinds of games, mostly because I'm afraid that it's just going to get kind of boring for uh, you guys because there's no real gameplay. It's most of the gameplay is just going to be me making choices. But I figured I do a lot of. I think a lot of the best parts of sometimes of my uh, of Let's Plays are just the story itself. So after some thought, I think you know this this could work. You know, I'm I'll, this is sort of an experiment. I kind of want to see what you guys think. If you guys enjoy this, then I will continue it. But if you know you don't, then I can just move on to something else. But uh, just so you all know, um, I have turned off the voices uh, because this game only has a Japanese dub. If it had an English dub, I probably would keep the voices on. But because it's only Japan. Japanese, I'm gonna turn them off. I know this is probably gonna turn some of you off. Um, I'm sure the Japanese dub is actually fantastic, but the reason why I turn it off uh, is because, uh, one, I like there to be at least some kind of English dialogue. So I like that's why I like to read out all the the dialogue in the games I play. You know, in addition to doing the voices and acting things out, I like to. I like it so you guys don't have to sit there and read, like, the text boxes, you know? You can just listen if you want. You know, I feel like when you're watching a video, you shouldn't have to, like, read all the stuff, you know? It's not, we're not reading a book here. I suppose I could do it, leave the Japanese stuff on, but read it afterwards, but the game would take so long. Just imagine, like, having to wait for the Japanese dialogue to dub to finish, and then me reading over it again. It would just take forever. So, yeah, that's, that's my reason behind it. So this way, but this way also, I mean, this is kind of what I'm... The kind of thing I, you guys sort of know me for is uh, giving characters my, their own voices, you know, creating my own dubs and doing uh, silly ad-libs and shit like that. With that, let's fucking get started. Oh, here we go. Everything's Quincy's, but even Quincy's is part of Faith's design. Apparently I didn't turn this part off. I'm not losing it, I'm perfectly safe. What I speak to now is the absolute truth, but not some childish fantasy. No matter how trivial something may seem, it has the potential to shape the future. Have you heard of the butterfly effect? If not, look it up. I know what that is. Then you'll understand how careful you must be. Unfortunately, I didn't understand. I only had realized how dangerous my actions were. Then I wouldn't have lost her. Uh oh. The future. Wouldn't have turned out like this. But... How could I have known? How could I have known? That by pressing that button, I would decide the fate of all mankind. Just think about it. The average human perceives just 1% of his environment. We're not nearly as clever as we like to think. We go about our lives oblivious to a million different things that happen around us every day. Even when someone catches our eye, our brain forgets it in a moment later. I want to tell them the me back then. Don't do anything careless. Don't do anything rash. Don't pretend you didn't see that. Pay more attention. The hand of conspiracy was always closer than you thought. Just waiting for the right moment to strike. Nice. That was, that was a cool, kind of a cool intro. I can tell the Japanese dub is quite good, actually. The universe has a beginning, but it has no end. Infinite. Stars too, too have a beginning, but are by their own power destroyed. 
History teaches that those who hold wisdom are often the most foolish. The fish in the sea know not the land. If they too hold wisdom, they too will be destroyed. It is more ridiculous for man to exceed light speed than for fish to live as ashore, to live ashore. This may also be called God final, God's final warning to those who rebel. Steins Gate. Uh, okay. Alright, now we're now we're past that. See what I mean, though? It's sort of like... I mean, I know that was auto-scrolling and I had to talk over it, but if... Imagine I had to sit through that and then... Then say the message afterwards. I mean, I could just... Just let it talk and not me, me not say anything, but to me, that would just... I, I feel like that wouldn't put a lot of life into the LP. Otherwise, then it's like, why even do an LP if you can just play the game yourself, you know? Uh, hey, what are you mumbling about? Who's talking? There's no sound from the phone against my right ear, only silence. I'm baking in the summer sun. Sweat slowly slides down my chin and drops into the asphalt. Oh. <laughs> oh, you look, you look cute. <laughs> You got, you got little, your eyes are so tie-dye looking. I'll give you sort of a cutesy voice because you look cute. As I try to figure out voices, as you guys know, it sometimes it takes me a few tries to get it right, so. <laughs> I only have a limited number of female voices anyway, but. Ocarin, Earth to Ocarin. Ocarin, 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 Ocarin. Ocarin? Ocarin. 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 I'm probably Ocarin. I'm going to stick with Ocarin. <laughs> Hopefully I don't say A girl standing in front of me. She calls my name with an inquisitive tilt of her head. We were about to infiltrate deep into the enemy territory, yet despite the imminent risk of death, there is no hint of tension on our instant childlike features. I curved my phone's mouthpiece and turned to the girl with an index finger to my lips. I'm guessing I'm that guy, right? That guy was talking earlier. Uh. You talking to, are you talking to someone? I nod and put my phone back to my ear. Still no sound from the other side. My contact, my contact is wise to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. Uh, Rintaru. Is that me? Okay, so yeah, this is the guy I was talking earlier. I'm... I don't know what I should give him. Should I just give him my regular voice, or should I give him something like... Because I, I did learn a little bit about, like, just... I, I saw some of the main characters. He's This guy's supposed to be sort of like a mad scientist, I think, right? So, should I give him, like... I don't think I don't want to give him a German voice or anything like my... But I, like I usually tend to do for, like, scientists. But maybe, like... Uh... Like the Gundam voice, so that or is that too ridiculous? I wonder. No, I was just talking to someone. Everything's fine. I'm a, I'm about to infiltrate the assembly hall. Still no reply. Looks like they just want my report. It's too dangerous to waste time talking here anyway. Uh, okay, yeah, Rintaro, that's me. Yeah, Doctor Nakabachi got out the jump on us, but I'll make sure he tell he tells us everything. Keyword added. Uh, what? The organization's already on the move. Open my eyes wide to match my sh match my shock tone. The girl turned towards me in surprise. I saw her shaking my head as I rubbed my temples. I, s I see. So that's the choice of Steins Gate, El Sai Congro. I speak the paint parting words and park in my pocket my cell phone. Steins Gate. Some know it. Some know it. Know it as fate. Others, it is the will the will of God. You could count on one hand the people in this world aware of its true nature. In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advance toward Radio Kaiken, which is just across the street from the train station. Of course, this is enemy territory. I can't just stride through the front door like an average person. I bypass the elevators and escalators and head to the 8th floor by the stairwell. But I only make it to the 7th floor before I have to stop and rest. Who was on that phone? The girl, Sheena, Sheena Mayuri, immediately resumes her conversation. She followed me all the way here, and she isn't even short of breath. I, on the other hand, am gasping for air with my hands on my knees. Ah! Oh, what the hell? Who would have thought an eight-story building would be so tall? I turned to my area while wiping the sweat off my brow. Neh. <laughs> oh, look, she got a little kitty face. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Thanks, Ocarina. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> my area smiles happily and doesn't pry any further. Oh, wow, you would kill me? Thanks so much. And as always, she's quick to understand my position. We've known each other since we were both little. Mayuri is 16, two years younger than me, so she's more like a little sister than a typical childhood friend. 
Uh, I don't know, she's just kind of cute looking, isn't she? I've been looking out for her for as long as I can remember. I used to hope that Mayuri might become the key to Stein's Gate, but now I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her. For her, she should live a normal life. That is my present wish. Whoa! Whoa! What am I looking at? Whoa. We came to the team to the eighth floor and enter the assembly hall. In front of us stands a cheap looking stage with a podium and a sign reading Dr. Nakabachi's A Time Machine Press Conference. Akarin, Akarin! Miyuri insists on calling me Akarin, but it's neither my real name nor my code name. It's just one of those annoying nicknames people use. <laughs> I was like, what is it? That's not his name though, right? How many times do I have to tell you? Don't call me Akarin! Huh? But I've always called you that. That was that was then. I have since become Hyonin Kiyoma, the insane mad scientist hunted by secret organizations around the world. Muhahaha! <laughs> <laughs> that's hard to remember. <laughs> True name. Okay, has been added to tips. Where is that? Is that like? No, 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 no. How do I do things? In any case, Hyo Hyoin Kiyoma is my true name. Besides, it didn't even sound like a Kaba Rintaro. You're weird. <laughs> <laughs> Cease your foolish laughter. A Kaba Rintaro may be my real name, but I've rejected it for it. It's stupid. <laughs> and I also hate the derivative Akarin. Come on, it sounds like that elf boy's blue pipe thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Akarin, can I ask you something? In one ear and out the other. She's been calling me that for five years now, so maybe it's time to give up. What are we doing here? Wait, you followed me here without knowing why? Yep. <laughs> she nods. She nods without dropping dropping her smile. We're here for Doctor Nakabachi's press conference. We're staying in the assembly hall on the eighth floor. Ryo Kaiken is here. The conference will be held. Doctor Nakabachi is an inventor. He appears on TV from time to time and has a few patents under his belt, but mostly he's treated as a curiosity. Press conference, but where are the reporters? Mayor is right. I've scanned the entire hall, but there's no one who looks like a reputable reporter of camera or cameraman. There are only about 10 of us standing in the hall, including me. Considering Nakabachi's modern media presence and the fact that he claims to have invented a time machine, oh sweet, I would have expected more. Could this be the organization working its twisted influence? I twist my lips into a sneer. Mwahaha. I thought that Nakabachi was like me, a scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. Okay, I have to right click. That's how you do it. Okay. Open glossary. Chun Chuni Bio, the, the name Chun Bio. That's the the name that describes one true essence, soul name. Oh, there it is. The organization. The organization is the organization. Nothing more, nothing less. Its formal name is something else, but even uttering the name is a death wish. For that reason, all who know its of its existence call it simply the organization. Oh, okay. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. I prefer not to get wrapped up in this mess. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. That's why I'm here, blowing an afternoon of my precious summer holiday. Mayuri ponders my utterance for a while before finally turning her head. You rap, you rap sing? Is he, is his, it's his birthday today too? <laughs> <laughs> I let, I let out a sigh. Mayuri is not known to only make bad jokes, but to laugh at them too. <laughs> oh, I like you already, you're funny. She's always been special. <laughs> Keep your guard up, Mayuri. I suspect this won't be a normal conv. Con but I didn't even finish my sentence. <laughs> Electro? Are we under? Are we under attack? Are there? Are we? Are we? They try to fire our brains with electromagnetic wa waves. What the fuck? Dust falls from the ceiling as the floor shakes. We're definitely under attack. It's coming from above. We're on the top floor. All it's above is the roof. An earthquake? Is it magnitude two? What is what is what does magnitude mean again? No time to no time to deal with Myers' confusion. Now something's not right about this. What in the balls? I bolt out of the conference room and run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no trespassing signs in my way. Whoa! What the hell? Doors open. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the lock has been broken. I open the door and see a billowing cloud of black smoke. There's some kind of phosphorescent dust sparkling in the air. Yeah, like what the balls is that? An explosion! I can't believe it. Was there really an explosion? My heart is racing. Damn it. I don't know what to do. Should I run away? Why an explosion? Terrorist? No, that doesn't fit. I mean, how do you explain that? <laughs> oh, what the fuck? 
What the? A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. It's huge, maybe three meters tall and looks like a, kind of like a satellite. So th is that the time machine? Did that thing cause the shaking just now? Who put it here? Was it Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? Impossible, even if that were the case, how the hell would he get it up here? My head is bursting with questions. As I search for the courage to approach the machine, a throng of reporters and building staff burst onto the roof. They look just as confused as I am. Please, stay, stay back, everyone. And then a woman who I assume is a staff member appears to wave back at us. The press... The press conference will proceed as scheduled. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna forget about the big thing on my on the roof of the building. She's trying to hide something. Her response is unusually quick, almost like she was trying to keep me away from that, that device. I've got a nose for conspiracies and this stinks of a cover-up. What are they hiding? What was that explosion? I want, want to know, but I shouldn't risk any closer. I turn and leave. But not because I'm scared or anything like that. No. I'm too awesome for that. Staff, staff members lead us all back to the 8th floor. My area is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall either. I find her on the 7th floor. Capsule toy. Several capsule toy machines are lined up to next to a plate reading, birthplace of the Japanese PC. Skizzing upon them with a wistful look. I breathe a sigh of relief and take out my phone. It's me. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something's happening, and I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I know. I don't worry. I won't do anything to jeopardize the mission. El Sai Gongro. El Sai Gongro. Gongro. Is that a psych? It means the psychic kangaroo. <laughs> no, I think it means. I don't know what it means actually. <laughs> if I speak the words and hang up, I am able to. I'm able to wipe the sweat from my forehead. My sweat is cold. Half of me hopes something will happen. The other half fears the same thing. I put my way in my phone and look back at my Yuri. She's still staring at those capsule toys. She doesn't seem worried about the explosion at all. <laughs> <laughs> Can't decide she's level-headed or just air-headed. What are you doing? Hmm? Well, I really want I really want an Oopa. Just as I thought. <laughs> ah, look at little funny little things. Mayuri points to a capsule machine. The sign on the front says, Rynet Ka Kakuru 3D Character Doll Series. Rynet Kakuru is a popular anime series with its own card game spin-off, Rynet Ex Access Battlers. They even hold national international tournaments. Oopa is the series mascot's character. It resembles an elliptical egg with the limbs sticking out like some sort of deformed dog. <laughs> oh, look at it. Isn't it as adorable and slightly disturbing? <laughs> That's what they call an ugly cute character. <laughs> it, 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 it is just ugly cute. It's kind of like, kind of like pugs. Pugs are funny, like, or pugs or bulldogs or something. They're kind of ugly cute because your face is all smushed. High school girls find these creatures adorable for some reason. Last year, an, an ugly frog character was the rage. Its name escapes me though. Then go for it. I can't guarantee you'll get an open though. Mary, Mary gives me gives me a troubled smile. She's all out of 100 yen coins. <laughs> uh, is she tired? Is that is she referring to herself in the third person? <laughs> oh my god, stop. Stop. You're just being way too fucking adorable. Stop it. <laughs> okay, that is like <laughs> That is like the ultra mega adorable thing to do. Like it is this a Japanese or thing like like for herself in the third person. And now that she's giving herself a cute nickname. Mayushi is what Miyari comes herself, calls herself sometimes. According to her, it's supposed to have an extra, have an, have a star at the name, Mayushi Star. <laughs> but who really, but really, who cares? So can I borrow 100 yen, please? She holds her hand, hand out with a look like a begging puppy. Look, looks like she wants, she was playing this from the very beginning. Well, at least she didn't say give me. <laughs> Do you think it's that easy, Mayuri? You'll get no money from me, so I'll show you just how harsh life really is. I pull, out, I pull out 100 yen coins and send it into the machine slot to spin the lever. Uh, uh. I open the capsule and take out the contents. Mary leans forward eagerly to see what I got. It's an Oopa and it's metal! A metal Oopa! I, is it rare? Super rare! <laughs> he's like, he's like, you've gotta be shitting me. <laughs> no, I was trying, I was trying to prove a point. Like examine the middle Oopa, a boy who is watching us tries his luck on the same Rhino uh, machine. Oopada. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, a normal Oopa. This sucks. There you go. That was the other other random character voices. He looks at my metal Oopa in resentment. I try to see my ears are sparkling. <laughs> it's also fixed on the Oopa. <laughs> 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 he 
Hey, high school girl, you're acting like a little kid. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. There you go. Ha, huh, I give this creature of metal to you, Mayuri. Honestly, I, I don't want it. Really? Are you sure, Akarin? The name's Yorian, Yorian Koyoma. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, thank you, Akarin. Aw, uh, it's okay, funny girl. Is she doing it on purpose? <laughs> wow. It took, it took him a long time to say that sentence. Thank you all for coming to Dr. Takabashi's Time Machine Press Conference. I hear the announcement from the floor above. Sounds like they're starting. Let's go! I head to the stairs, but Miyuri doesn't follow. Let's go, Miyuri! Just a second, I gotta write my name. She's preoccupied with the metal looper. Ah, go on ahead. Without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce the inventor, Dr. Nakabashi. Please welcome with a big round of applause. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> There's only five of us here! Dr. Nakabashi enters into sparse applause. He walks up to the podium. He's already wearing a frown. For some reason, I can feel his irritation from here. I am Dr. Nakabashi. Thank you all for coming. Nakabashi takes the, takes the microphone and begins to speak, his voice brimming with confidence. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin, my, begin with my theory of time travel, the greatest scientific breakthrough of the century. Did he really build a time machine? My area appears after writing her name on the metal oopa. It's a bit late in more ways than one. What'd she think a time machine presentation would be about? <laughs> Take another look around the room. There are about 20 people now, including, including us, but still no media presence to speak of. So this is the extent of Dr. Nakabashi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. I was interested in what he had to say, true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't. As he proceeds to explain his time machine design, my curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. Uh, doctor! <laughs> my, my Roy silences Nakabachi and draws the eye, of, the eye of every person in the room. Do you take us for fools? Who the hell are you? Who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud, that's who. You stole your theory from John Titter, and you called yourself an inventor. Someone, throw this man out. You're the one who should be thrown out, Doctor. Have you no shame? You have no right to call yourself an inventor. Shut your mouth, you little pest. Oh, ooh. Just then, someone grabs my arm from behind. Quite convinced it's an official here to throw me out, I turn around to glare him down. Unhand me, you, huh? Oh. Hello. It's a girl, about my age. Hello there. She's got a little folder or something. Her intense stare seems to challenge me. I take a step back. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? Ah. We haven't met, but I know her face. It's Makise Kirisu. A few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article titled "Girl Genius Lives Lecture in Akihabara." Habara, Harara. The girl was about 17-year-old girl who had graduated from an American university. Her thesis was even published in a major scientific journal. Girl Genius Makisu Kurisu. I recognize the stubborn-looking girl from her photograph. Hmm. She's even wearing the exact same scowl. F. She likes her smiling to me. <laughs> What business could such a genius have with me? She takes a quick look around the room, then turns back with a stern expression. Could you come with me for a moment? What's with the attitude? She obviously is not staff. There's no way that THE Makisu Kurisu would be working with someone like Dr. Nakapashi. Which means, no! You're, you're with the organization! Huh? If their tendrils have gotten this far, then I made a great mistake. Stop fooling around and come with me. My outburst already attracted too much attention. Now, Kabachi in particular looks like he wants to rip my head off. Must be more fun to be exposed as a fraud by a bright young man like myself. <laughs> anyway, I mustn't draw any more attention to myself. The organization gets wind of my presence here. I could endanger my Yuri. To say nothing of these ignorant civilians. I let Makise Kirisu lead me out of the assembly hall. Try anything and people are sure to notice. What will your superiors say then? 
what are you talk what are you talking about? She glare she glares at me quite fiercely at that. Attractive though she may be, there is no innocence in her eyes. A beautiful agent unmatched in cruelty. My heart beats an acceleration from the danger. <laughs> I kinda like this guy. I like he's just super like intense about everything. Looks like the chaos really does get my blood pumping. <laughs> I just I just need to ask you something. What makes you think I'll answer? I know how the organization operates. What's with this organization stuff? Instead of answering, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. I've been caught by an organization agent. Yes, it's Makisu. Makisa Karisu. She's a dangerous one. No, it's, it's fine. I'll find a way to... <laughs> Karisu suddenly snatches the phone from my hand. Hey! What skill? I didn't have time to react. What are you doing? Huh? Your phone's off. <laughs> I'm not talking to anybody. I, I didn't even realize that. I thought I was just like... <laughs> I, I, th I don't know, I thought maybe I just wasn't hearing the voice of the other person on the other side, which I thought was kind of weird. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Okay, she looks sort of like... Who are you talking to? Like, I don't know, maybe... Okay, maybe a little more... Not monotone, but more sort of... Got some sass and frass. Her eyes pierce, pierce deep into my soul. I quickly look away. She's good. She's trying to attack my sense of identity in order to cause a mental break. Recover. This isn't enough to sway me. Your techniques don't work on me, but I'll tell you anyway. That, that's no ordinary phone. It's designed to deactivate the moment it leaves my hand. <laughs> Such measures are necessary to maintain secrecy. I know things could get me killed. <laughs> He's totally fucking insane, isn't he? <laughs> I am fucking bananas. I quickly wish you my remote phone and wipe the cold sweat off my forehead. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> so you talk to yourself. God! This is bad. Ordinary methods don't work on Mikise Karisu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she's the one psyching me out. Damn, looks like I'll have to make an action an a tactical retreat. If I can just find an opening. Ah! Suddenly Karisu steps up to me with this serious expression. She stares right at me, her huge eyes blazing with the strength of will. It's fire, I can't look away. Someone with such pure eyes would really be an organization agent? What were you trying to tell me tell me earlier? Earlier? What are you talking about? About 15 minutes ago, before the conference started. Nonsense! This is the first time we met. I was with Miyuri in the Upa toy 15 minutes ago. You were trying to tell me something, right? You look you looked really upset. This is a trap? This does seem like one of the organization's dirty tricks. Girl, what are you talking about? Would this girl do something that underhanded? It looked like you were going to start crying any second. Why, have we met before? What? She seems sincere. That makes her even more suspicious. That's right, don't let her beauty fool you. It's a cold, calculating, secret agent. Oh, I... I've already got an idea. So we're, we're saying... So it seems like time travel is probably a part of this. We're talking about the butterfly effect, obviously. Was that, like, me from the future coming back and talking with her? And then running away? Or, like, probably maybe warning her about something? I bet that's probably it, right? And now, to, and now she's meeting the present me, right? And I'm like, what, like, what we haven't met before? It's cold, calculating secret agent. If I show the slides for really, I'm done for. And how do you know my name? My knowledge has no limits. I'm a mad scientist, after all. Genius, genius girl, our next meeting shall be as enemies. Huh? Farewell, mwahaha! <laughs> I spin around and take off down the stairs, ignoring a call to stop, like I'd listen to the enemy. Fare thee well! Wah! And then I leap out the window like a motherfucking boss, and I fly through the sky. Now, go, go, gadget, jetpack! Damn the organization, they must be serious if they're sending in agents like her. I run all the way down to the fourth floor and check behind me. Once I'm convinced M Mikise Karis is not tailing me, I saw my rubbing my temples. But I can't let them capture me yet. Well then, what do I do now? My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabashi's research. That I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in going back. I guess I'll just go home. But wait, what if I gain something important? <laughs> Let's see now, what is it? <laughs> uh, Miri? Oh, yeah. Damn, I left Miri hot! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where am I, Elmi? <laughs> uh, accurate. I knew she'd be a liability. I shouldn't have brought her along. I was trying to prioritize her safety, but I got careless. I'll try calling her first. She's all right, and then I can just have just have her meet me here. With that thought in my mind, I take out my phone and turn it on. 
and it rings just as it rings just as I do. Oh, hmm, an email. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that was a snazzy ringtone. Oh, oh, dang, uh, that was where my mouse kind of moved on its own there. I was like, oh, uh, it's just a regular email. There's a video attached to it. It's from an unknown address. Uh, I opened the video file with some trepidation. Uh, huh? It's nothing but noise. Is this a prank or some sort of Makise Kurisu style attack? And that noise, some sort of pe make people go crazy frequency. No, wait, I don't remember giving her my email, my mail address, so I'm probably just thinking too hard. I curse myself for being gullible enough to play the video. <laughs> I have more pressing matters to deal with anyway. I have no time for this! Oh. Oh. It keeps moving my mouse on its own. I stopped the video and called Murray's phone from my address book. <laughs> Bitch, get out your ass over here. Damn it, Murray, why won't you pick up? Looks like I have to go back to the assembly hall. But things will get messy if I bump heads with Nikisa Kurisu again. Wait, don't tell me. Did that femme fatale kidnap Mayuri? <laughs> oh, yeah, please save me, Akra. Oh, God. Now, go, go, gadget spring shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. Damn you, is that how the organization operates? Leave without Mayuri isn't an option. Call me overprotective, but she's a little sister to me, and there's a very real danger that she might wander off some somewhere the moment I let my, her out of my sight. Mayuri's always been like that. I'll never know. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. Since that's why I became Hyo Yohin Kyoba. I have to go back for her. Away! Thought of climbing back up the eighth floor. <laughs> floor is depressing, but I have no choice. I must go. <laughs> and everyone's in the same place they were before. <laughs> I got back to the assembly hall. Doctor Nakabachi's conference is just finished. Nobody's on stage, and my phony investigator is already or inventor has already left. Twenty so members of the audience start are starting to pick up, pack up. I soon find Mayuri. She's in the corner, looking lost. Uh, well, at least she wasn't kidnapped. Even better, I don't see Makise Kurisu anywhere. Ha! Looks like I scared her off. So be it. I'll let her go this time. <laughs> uh, I like this guy. This is good so far. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Very uh, enthusiastic, exuberant personality. Still, I keep my eyes peeled as I run to Mayuri. Oh no, she said. Yuri, why didn't you pick up? We're leaving. We're leaving. Akira, my metal Upa ran away. Sure, turns to me with a forlorn expression. Oh no, ran away? What's alive? That's a little hard to believe. I, I think I dropped it. Oh no, it's okay, funny little hat girl. I see. So she was looking for it. Like it really matters. Forget about it. You can always get another one. No way, metal Upa sell upwards of about ten thousand yen online. You know. What the balls? <laughs> That's like the equivalent of what, like. 100 US dollars, right? Wait, 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 what? <laughs> a toy is worth that much? I, no, probably a bit more, more than that. I, I think a yen is, is it's more than, like, a penny, right? Hey, <laughs> think, Mayuri, why did you drop it? I, I don't know, that's why I'm looking. And if we find it, you can't sell it. You can't sell it, okay? <laughs> that 10,000 yen will fund my research. I said you can't sell it. It even has Mayushi's name on it. Aw. Oh. <laughs> uh, thus begins our search for the metal Upa. Do do do, Upa, come out, come out, wherever you are. Yuri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, Tuturu Tutu is Yuri's catchphrase. Tuturu Tuturu. Sounds like the sounds like a Studio Ghibli movie. Tuturu 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 Tuturu. It means, actually, I've never bothered to ask what it means. <laughs> anyway, the metal Uba is nowhere to be found. Maybe she didn't drop it in the assembly hall, but on the seventh floor landing near the capsule's toy machines. Or the possibility that someone with an eye for rare items pilfered it. Those bastards. Damn them. Just imagine the smug grin on that person's face makes me writhe in envy. What kind of man steals a helpless girl's toys? There's nothing in his heart but lust for money. Uh, it sounds like you, Akarin. Whoa, wasn't expecting that from you, Mary Yuri. <laughs> hey, I'm nothing like that. <clears throat> ah! <laughs> what, what the testicles? What was that? Was that a scream? I think so. 
Only the presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall. Including Mayor and me, less than half the audience remains. Everyone looks at each other anxiously, startled by the scream. Even I cannot express a shiver. Down to my fairy balls. First the explosion on the roof, now this? What's going on here? Mayuri squeezes my hand tight. Stay here, Mayuri. Take a deep breath and prepare myself and head into the direction of the scream. Go, go, gadget jet skis. <laughs> the echoes lead me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. Pretty sure it came from that, around that corner. Crouch down and turn the corner slowly. Keep my eyes and ears peeled for any signs of danger. And there at the end of the passage, I see it. There's something on the ground. No, someone. Motionless. Uh-oh. Is it Dr. Nakabashi? Who is it? The clothes are familiar. It can't be. Oh! What? Oh! Her! Makisa Karisu. Her face is turned away, but I, I know it's her. That pertinent genius girl I just fought with ten, ten minutes ago. It's not face down in a pool of bright red blood. Sh she's dead. No, but, but why? Suddenly I realize that I'm shaking. I, I want to run, R run away. I shouldn't have come. Th this is wrong. Someone killed Makise Karisu. Th there's no other explanation. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. Oh. Ah! Twist around in shock. Some other men have followed me. And every one of them is ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. C -c Call the police! I cries out in panic. At this, everyone else starts screaming and running away. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Your son from Mikisa Gariso is superseded by him in my instinctive urge to flee. <laughs> Fuck this bitch, I'm out of here. When I get back to the assembly, all Miri is waiting for me with tears in her eyes. Oh no. What happened, Alcarid? We're leaving. I grab Miri's hand and run. I race us to us trying to drive the image of Kurisu's dead body. Grusu's dead body from my mind, but, but I can't. The redness of her blood has burned into my mind more than the sight of the body itself. That was my first time seeing a dead body. This is what it's like. When I realized that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. But that was what I felt, fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? Because I just didn't know, there, know her that well. I mean, it's... I mean... It really it met her like two seconds ago. <sighs> ah. Finally, stop. Once we get out to the main street, Chuo Dori. I just pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. Hey, what happened? You look really pale. Miura doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. <laughs> she looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. Someone died. Eh? It takes several deep breaths. The color of the blood of that blood still stains my brain. But I've calmed down a bit. Makise Karisu is dead. I don't know who the killer is. Sirens in the distance, I guess an ambulance will be here soon. The police will arrive and this area will become a crime scene. For now, the crowd's milling through Akihabara uh, that's a hard one to say. Akihabara Akiha Akihabara. Okay. The Rakia Barra have no idea what it, what happened just now. Oh, wait, how did I do that? Oh yeah, I can change my stuff. Hey. <laughs> oh yeah, I can change my ringtone and everything. I'll show it to you, cause I'm so cool. Uh, ooh, I got an even, I even got an achievement for it. Sweet. Okay, how do I go back? Oh, there we go. How did I bring it out? Oh, I moved my mouse to the bottom corner. I see. Mayuri, where are you? I'm standing right next to you. Uh, oh, yes. Sorry. So I hit, I hit this. It actually connects me to the internet. <laughs> Opens up their little, like a little browser or something. But now the crowd's milling through Rocky Habara. Aki Habara have no idea what has happened now. Everyone is going out their business as usual, the never ending search for electronics, Moe and Poor. <laughs> Moe. <laughs> Got added in my keyword seriously? Okay, I gotta see that. What, what exactly? Otaku. Oh, there we go. Where do you describe characters that are cuter and daring? Includes flaws such as glasses, clumsiness, or ditziness. Also, you should refer to the culture of entertainment. 
So there are characters who possess those traits, pronounced moe. Moe. Vending machine that suspends small toys at random. One cannot tell what the toy is before opening the cap. So guys, a lot of stuff. You can get in this game in there. Look at that. Whoa. I guess it's sort of help you with uh, some of the lingo, Japanese lingo and stuff. Electromagnetic wave. Waves that exhibit produce properties of both electric and mag electricity and magnetism for swarmly. Okay, this is all kind of. I don't know. So far, I haven't really experienced anything that I, I don't really know what that means. I didn't know what John Titter was. A self proclaimed time traveler from 2030. Okay, that's a fictional character. 2036, who appeared on an American internet message board in November 2000. The internet went into an uproar, flooding the board with questions and debate. The tire. Titter posted pictures of his time machine in his control manual, as well as diagrams and illustrating time machine mechanics. He also disclosed information on near future events, time travel, physics, history, inter. Event, history intervention, the multiverse, timelines, and world lines. And then four months after his appearance, he left a comment saying, I'll be leaving this world line shortly, and this will be my final post and disappeared. Huh. Oh, I see. Is that actually a real thing? So that was a real thing? <laughs> this Because this one says fictional next to it. A popular manga serialized in Loco, Lo Loco Comics, the third season of the anime adapt adaption, is currently airing on 2TV. The series is ostensibly aimed at children. The realistic names depicted are also appeal to adults. Just another day in Akiha, Akiha, Akihabara. I take out my phone out of my I take my phone out of my pocket, and perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. Oh, I know my friend Dar. I'll tell him what happened just now, and since he knows about Makisa Karisu, oh, I suppose it might be disrespectful, respectful of the victim. My journal is pumping. I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like that firsthand. That's how humans are, after all. We're not special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty, slime-like flesh. <laughs> Our souls fester like se semen left to rot in the womb. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That's nasty, dude. That's how we humans are. While wallowing in a bit of angst, I begin to type on my phone. Blah, 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 blah. Trouble. Someone stabbed Makisa Karisu. I, it was me. Look bad. Hope she's okay. <laughs> Probably dead, though. Oh, don't, oh, I added, don't know who. I don't know if she was stabbed. That just seems like the most logical explanation, given the amount of blood in the absence of a gunshot. On the other hand, I didn't write write that she was dead, even though I'm pretty sure she was. I can't explain why I didn't. If I had to say, I guess I felt like I guess I felt like writing it down would set it in stone. It makes me feel guilty as well. The thought brings a smirk to my face. It's not like I'm the one who killed her. Why should I feel guilty? I just saw someone's death up close, and only a few minutes later, I'm smiling. Am I really that cruel and cold? Well, I am a fiendish mad scientist, so it suits me. <laughs> I am self-proclaimed mad scientist. <laughs> this guy seems to revel in that, doesn't he? Finish typing and place my thumb over the send button. And then, I press down. Sending. Sending! 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 Well, what the balls? Uh, what is happening? What? What was that? Wait, look around. Whoa, what? They're, they're gone. Summer break. Noon. Busy street in town. Just now, thousands of pedestrians vanished into thin air. It's a dream? Am I hallucinating? I, I don't know. But they're gone. I saw them vanish with my own two eyes. Oh boy, what did I just do? I stand petrified, speechless, and alone on the empty street. If to find someone, anyone, I look up. And there, at the top of Rido Kaiken, sticking out from the eighth floor event hall where we just were. What the fuck? It's a crashed satellite.
Steins Gate. Prologue of the beginning and the end. Huh. Chapter 1. Time Travel Paranoia. Interesting. Hey you, can, can you see us? Why don't you answer? I'm asking you a question. Yes, you on the other side of the monitor. Hm, your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. Suppose that, from your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. <laughs> well, that is, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> For it is you who are inside. Your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you, too. What in the hell just happened? The reality is on this side of the screen. Don't believe me, I don't blame you. Few are, those, few are those who can handle the truth. But no matter, I shall speak in simpler terms easy enough for even you to understand. Oh, is he talking to me directly? Like, ha ha ha. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, are you really, are you breaking the fourth wall? Yes. This is the Future Gadget Laboratory located in the Akihabara Akahiba district of Tokyo. We call it simply the lab. Our purpose is to shatter the system and plunge the world into chaos. Really? You shouldn't do, you shouldn't do bad things, Akarin. Quite. I'm a bad scientist, remember. <laughs> the station, head down to Chuodori until you reach Su Su Sue Hirocho Station and then take a left on the... Oh, my God. Kamurabashi Dori. In the alley before the traffic light, you'll find a run-down Yorihama building. The lab is on the second floor. On the first floor is a store of ill repute called Bron Tube wor Workshop. You can't miss it. It deals exclusively in CRT monitors of all things. Can you imagine? Even the heart of Akihabara's electric station, the demand for CRTs is practically non-existent. But the proprietor of the Bron Tube's workshop, Ten Tenoji, is also the owner of the building. That's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculously niche hobby his shop as, even as land value continues to rise. May, seems, may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now, the entire second floor is mine for next to nothing. Mwah! I digress. I dig but I digress. The future of Gadget, Lab Gadget Laboratory is currently experiencing a sever severe shortage of manpower. We welcome dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are. Akron, Akron, you gotta say my lab. You gotta say lab mems, not researchers. <laughs> our, our lab mems, laboratory members, are three. I'm the founder of the future Gadget Lab at Lab Mem Number One. The insane mad scientist, Hyoin Kiyoma. <laughs> Akron is cuter, though. <laughs> Next, we have... Oh, could you cosplay? Next, we have a... <laughs> we have our resident cosplayer and only female member. Lab member number two, Sheena Miori. <laughs> cosplayer? <laughs> she's, oh, look, oh, is that what she's working on over there? She make a little cosplay costume? No, look at... Oh, look, there's a little fish dangling on the wall. <laughs> what in the heck is that? It looks like a fish inside of a muffin. <laughs> Call me my Yushi. I always make. I like making costumes more than wearing them. I see. And last, we have our resident super super hacker. <laughs> super hacker. Lab member number three, uh, Hashida Itaru. Uh, that must be that guy over there. Okay. Uh, well, he's got glasses on. I could I could just say, oh, let's give the most Shurige voice, but is that appropriate? He does look kind of nerdy. Uh, stop calling me that. It's super hacker. Duh. Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. For details, see our lab's homepage. www.iamcrazy.com <laughs> Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for the war with the Dark Dominion, but that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, it's, that's all it spawned. Our arsenal of future gadgets is up, up to eight, but this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. <laughs> like in that tennis, tennis manga, right? I get it. <laughs> No, it's the number of earthly desires and mortals you ate at channel junkie. <laughs> oh no, I think I think motion reading voices would be just right for this guy. He sounds like a total dork, right? And I thought I told you not to interrupt me when I'm talking. Yeah, wouldn't want to interrupt you talking to yourself. <laughs> I'm not talking to myself. Can't you see? I'm talking to the person behind the monitor. Uh, he just grinned. <laughs> what are you grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside the monitor. <laughs> just say, don't look at me. I don't think it's gonna work. It appears our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deep, so deeply in denial of reality. Maybe they, maybe they think we're in the game. I doubt it's even occurred to them. <laughs> oh, I doubt it's even, doubt it's even occurred to them. But are, but are your two D girlfriends the same way? <laughs> that, that's different. Those girls are my wives. I love them. <laughs> yes. No. No. I feel like this is, this is just right. <laughs> uh oh my God! I love them. My wife is. <laughs> 
They're my waffles. Nobody cares about your harem. But, uh, but my, my Yushi touched upon a very interesting theme, you know. Well, if we're actually just characters in a game. Anyway, anyway, we can know for sure. <laughs> Wow, what if real life is like that too? What if God is watching me right now and is like, oh my god, this Nico character is so fucking boring. I'm gonna have him go make me a sandwich. He's like tapping the screen. Stupid fucking iPhone game. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on! Such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. <laughs> nice chin chimbia, bro. Chinebrio. Wait a minute. I step back from the monitor. What the fuck is that? Ah! Play on the screen is the ugly cute character Alpaca Man. Alpaca Man! That is not disturbing in the slightest. Oh my god. That kind of reminds me of that, uh, a game called Sea Man, where it's like, it has like a person's face on a fucking fish. He talks to you and tells you important life lessons. Like, and I'm serious, I'm not even joking about that. He does try to instill in you important life lessons. He is also a star snarky, sarcastic little prick, but <laughs> it's like, it's so fucking weird, and like, I don't know, something about it just like disturbs me so much. It's a game called Alpaca Man 2, where you speak to Alpaca Man via a microphone and watch him react. Hello there, I am Alpaca Man! Feed me, motherfucker! <laughs> he gets a little testy when you don't feed him. I swear to God, I will shit on you! The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally, I find only the ugly part of the ugly cute to be true. Yeah, I kinda gotta agree with that. But yesterday, 500 yen used, as it included. <laughs> Turn to Dario with a menacing glare. <laughs> Shut it, Hacker! I'm no chin- I'm no chin mule patient. Chuni- Chuni view patient? I actually don't know what that means, so let's look that up! I know what an alpaca is! I thought I was gonna tell me what alpaca man was. <laughs> Literally 8th grade syndrome, a term referring to a mindset exhibited primarily by teenager- teenage males. Also used as a derogatory term to refer to older people who still exhibit this mindset. Characterized by an affected attitude toward nihilism or cynicism, extreme self-centeredness, solutions of power or superiority, <laughs> And a consuming fear of being treated as a child. <laughs> Actually, that uh, fits it pretty well. The person exhibiting these symptoms believes that they are cool, but most observers find them pathetic. <laughs> That's perfect. It seems like this was made exactly for this for uh, uh, this character. Chunibyu, which is often abbreviated Chuni, refers to the fictional tropes that teenage males often enjoy, such as the HD conspiracy superpower, especially power sealed in a character's eye or arm, Norse mythology, battles for the fate of the multiverse, etc. The consummate. Chinubryu you case will work such elements into his own personal backstory. Ocarina is a textbook ex Yes! That's right. I was like, is exactly what that is. <laughs> it was like, this was literally made for you. I, yeah, I know what cosplay is. And we dress up and go, Yee! Wee! Don't look at me. What's that? On the internet, it is an unread rule to say this whenever you see an image of someone or something looking towards the camera. Oh, okay. Super hacker! Tremendously skilled hacker, at least someone who claims to be one. The threat, my ha friend's a hacker, so you can easily find out who you are. Often appears uh, during arguments on the internet. People mockingly call the obviously non existent hacker a hacker. Oh, I see. The system. The system is the means by which the organization maintains its grip on humanity. Oh, I see. Its full scope is too fast to comprehend. Is this just all in his imagination? Suffice it to say, the system gives the organization influence over government, religion, media, culture, and science worldwide. Most people do not even know that their lives are controlled by a system is so deeply embedded in fabric of society that modern civilization would not be able to function without a destroying system therefore plunge the world into chaos. CHAOS! Well, uh, you know, unlike a lot of, like, playing Phoenix Wright where the game just sort of, like, ends in a perfect place where I can end the video, this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult to find a good ending spot, but I think this is probably a pretty good spot. I think I've been going over an hour or so. Uh, I'm gonna be here for now. Like I said, this is sort of me experimenting. I want to see what you guys thought of this. If you guys want to see more of it, please let me know. Let me know what, of the voices that I gave these characters, if they're appropriate, hopefully. Um, I'm sure I probably mispronounced like a whole bunch of shit, but whatever. I'm sure you guys will, I'm sure you guys will fucking correct me on it. Um, but yes, let me know what you guys think. If this is a series, that, something you want to see a series of. And if it is, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe now, become Pinky Penguin aboard the SLP. The days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. Yeah, I uh, look forward to hearing what you guys think. Uh, if it isn't something you want, I'll I can do something else. Uh, if you guys want to see more, and I'll continue with it. I'm enjoying it. I think it's actually uh, quite engaging so far. So, um, even without a whole lot of gameplay, you know, I I like doing voices. I like doing these characters. So, and I, I find Rintaro Rintaro was pretty funny. I, I think I liked Miyuri too. So, anyway, till next time, guys. Stay classy.